Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet, and today is gonna be part of a long multi-part series. We are going to be tearing down this engine bolt by bolt and laying all the pieces out so you can see it all spread out on table. That's our sprocket there. Um, I'm not really worried about dropping it in the motor because, well, we're taking the whole thing apart, but I do wanna wiggle this thing loose. Cam box here. I'm just letting it drop. All right, cam box. That comes off, there's our little weep screw. And uh, yeah, put that aside. Let me fish that sprocket out of there. Sprocket. All right, that's our sprocket. It has a orientation mark L faces left side. That's gonna be our line for top dead center. I wanna put it back on the camshaft here. And on the back side here, I'm gonna point out See how that ear is all round? See how this one has, it's like round that it has a flat on it. That should be the side for the, uh, the bolt that has the uh, shoulder on it. Let me take that back out of there again. I'll show you guys. Come on. Right, we'll look real closely inside the bolt holes. Like this bolt hole is threaded all the way and that bolt hole, like the first like eighth of an inch uh, is not threaded, so that's how we know which one of the bolts go in. So if the threaded one goes in here, it's all threads. And then the one that has the, the smooth on it will go on that side. And that one's hyper important because if you mix these bolts up, A, you won't get the engine in time, and B, if you actually try to put it together and tighten it down, you're gonna crack the camshaft. It was Honda's attempt to make sure it goes together one way but the bolts are too similar and they figured out later on is either to make everything symmetrical or make one side significantly bigger than the other so you can't put it together so they're just too close on that. Our next step is going to be removing, there's uh, two bolts here that actually hold the cylinder head to the cylinder. Uh, we'll take those out. Head's gonna come off and then the cylinder's gonna slide off. break the head gasket, we're gonna wrap it real lightly with the, uh, uh, the mallet. And we're gonna be really careful about how we hit it. We don't wanna break any fins. Um, I'm gonna probably be hitting kind of here in the middle, maybe under the port here where it's a little bit meatier. And then on the back sides, I don't wanna like hit the hell out of it. I just wanna break the gasket loose like that. You know that moved. Chain guide. I think we have to pull the cylinder off first. All right, cylinder's gonna come off next. Same deal. I'm gonna hit right here for the casting a sticker, maybe on the back side to break the cylinder loose. Cylinder, the chain guide, we can 
Take that pin out. Chain guide came out. And there's also some of these dowels on the bases here for cylinder head for uh, alignment. A question that uh, people ask me about every now and then has to do with these like blue kind of rubber blobs on the, the front two uh, engine studs here. Uh, it, it gives you the impression that it's some kind of oil seal on the studs, but the oil for the top end of the engine actually comes up the rear two studs. Uh, I don't really know what they're for. My best guess is it has something to do in the uh, at the factory about the alignment dowels, as in maybe that's the, you know, it was a quick way for the people at the factory to know that the dowels drop on there, and it has a little bit of resistance when you put the, the dowels in place. I really don't know. All I know is if they're not there, you're okay, because uh, people ask about replacements of it, but it's just like a blob of like rubber that's on there. There's like a part that actually Honda sells, so. Don't know, don't have to remove them, but that's the best we can figure out for now. I say they look like the Alamo, the shape. Push the pin. Small tent here. Big wheel. Man, this one's in good shape. The engine is in great shape. I'm gonna remove the pistons now. Oh, and since you're tearing the whole motor down, I can be sloppy with it, but if you're doing a top end and you weren't uh, gonna be taking the bottom end apart, I highly recommend putting a rag in the cam chain area and then also underneath the piston so you don't drop the clip inside the engine. Uh, it's really easy to do. Okay, so we're gonna pull the piston pin out here. All the pistons always have a, a little notch in them and that's so you can pop out the, the wire clip and I'm just gonna use a hook. I'm actually gonna come in from this direction here can. Let's see if I can come in that way. No, we're going to have to go this way. I'm going to get my magnet because I don't want this to fly across the, the shop here. These should be changed anytime you take the pistons off and change the clips. I think these are gonna come out easy. Yeah, they should come out pretty easy, look at that. Sometimes they're really stuck, like really stuck. Wrist pin. Take the piston off. I'm gonna talk about a couple details here on the piston that y'all may not know about. Uh, this is an original Honda piston. This is ART on it. That's how you know it's an original Honda piston. Top ring is always this silver ring. Middle ring will be uh, kind of a gray, uh, grayish black ring. And this has a one piece oil ring right here, this big thick one. Uh, they work, but our replacement piston rings use a three-piece oil ring, which is easier to install and actually uh, works better than the original. And then I, I have the piston flipped around. There's still a retaining clip for the opposite side in place there. You don't have to take out both clips to take the pin out. And uh, on the top of the piston, you have to get the orientation correct. If we scrub away all this carbon, you would see like a little arrow that points at the front of the engine. But if you don't have that, this is called a valve relief, which has that cut there, and then also a little smaller cut there. This one is bigger than that one. So the intake valve is the bigger valve, so the bigger relief faces the intake valve, which will be you know, the carburetor side, and the smaller cutaway is gonna face the exhaust, because this exhaust valve has a smaller, smaller diameter. So you have to just make sure you orient the piston correctly when it goes back in based on the valve relief. Keep 
keep my wrist pin with this one. Same exercise, other piston. I really should, let's go ahead and do this because if we're gonna reuse your pistons again, you need to know which one's the right and which one's the left. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off that skirt real quick and I will mark it just so we know which one's right and left. If you have a multi-cylinder engine like a four-cylinder, you're gonna to wanna to mark those again. So this one came off this side, this is the right-hand piston. All right, go ahead and mark this one too while we're here. The last few things we're gonna do while the engine is uh, in this position upright uh, is gonna to be to remove this guy, which is the neutral, uh, transmission to neutral, it's called the detent ball. It's gonna be a little spring and ball under this kind of goofy cap here. And then we have two bolts here and here that hold the uh, crankcase together. And we'll flip the crankcase over and then we'll split the cases, but we're gonna take care of this wall we're up on this side. It has a lock tab washer on it. We're gonna bend the lock tab down, take that out, and then we'll take out the, the, the two bolts. magnet here. Ball bearing. Look at that. Keep track of these bolts. We're going to come back to them in just a second. Okay, we'll flip this thing over, take the stand off, and take the bottom end apart. <laughs> 